Good day everyone and welcome back to DX Explorer for another video. In the today's video we have a very fun project, a direct conversion receiver project and it's a kit. It's called Little Roo 40 and is a kit offered by Kanga Products. Uh, I will leave a link in the video description. Um, it's not a sponsor post by the way. The kit was sent to me by my friend Daniel, Yankee Oscar 5 Papa Delta Whiskey. And uh, you get to pick which version you want to build. So you cannot cover the entire 40 meters band. You have to pick if you want to build it for the CW portion of the band or the SSB portion of the band. Daniel sent it to me already built uh, for the single sideband portion of the band. And I decided to rebuild the kit completely from scratch, but this time for the CW portion of the band. It sounds fantastic and it's very, very easy to build. I would recommend it uh, for a beginner, but uh, probably not as a first project, maybe as a second project would be better. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that even as a first project, if you follow the instructions uh, carefully, uh, step by step, and you have patience, you will definitely be successful and build this kit without any problems at, at all. Um, it sounds fantastic and it's based on the NA602 chip and the LM386 audio amplifier. I think the project was uh, originally based on the sudden receiver that it was presented by the GQRP club in the Sprat magazine. I hope I'm not wrong, but that's what I remember. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's fantastic for for uh, the simplicity that it has. It sounds it sounds great, and uh, I really like it. So I cannot wait to start using it with my simple CW transmitters that I built so far. And who knows, maybe do some uh, QSOs using both of them together. So that would be fun. But of course, I need some free time so I can finally learn the Morse code. Anyway, let's uh, get on the desk really quick and have a closer look at this nice receiver kit and uh, talk a little bit, a bit more about uh, building it and a couple of things that I discovered while building this, um, this uh, nice receiver kit. Um, okay, so here we are having a closer look at the, at the kit. Um, again, um, I will repeat myself, but it's very easy to build if you follow the instructions available on the product page. There's really no, uh, there's nothing complicated about this kit. Uh, there is not much to do um, to tune it. And uh, again, you just have to pick which version you want to build, the uh, uh, CW portion of the band or the single sideband portion of the band. And uh, in the instructions page, you will have separate instructions for both of those uh, choices. Um, one disadvantage that I found uh, in the instructions is that there's no schematic available. Even though, of course, I know that it's based on the southern receiver, so I know the schematic on that one. Of course, this one has a couple of modifications, so I don't know exactly, you know, the exact schematic. Um, I just have an idea, <laughs> um, a principle of how it works. Um, and I see the difference is that uh, this one has these two trimmers and of course there's no LC circuit for the tuning. Um, this one is controlled by a, um, a ceramic resonator, so I guess it's more stable in frequency. And uh, of course the... Uh, bandpass filter is just a little bit different and what else uh, probably that's it but anyway it would be very useful to have a schematic because to me honestly when I'm building a kit and I have no schematic I feel like I'm driving blind and it's nice uh, going through the instructions which are very carefully written so there's no way you can mess up the building the receiver using the instructions but again uh, the schematic a schematic would be very useful there was one confusion though about these uh, three pins with a link between two of them because in the instructions it said we're going to talk about this a little bit later but there's no nothing else on this one so i don't know what's the point of having these three pins over here and why there's a link between the two of them i have no clue but again maybe if we if we had the schematic it was a lot easier to figure out things also again i'm going to talk about the output the audio output when we're going to do the demo and i think that's it i messed up the couple of the capacitors when i took the kit apart um, but i replaced them with some of my own capacitors and i also messed up uh, a trace here on the back and i had to relink these two points with a piece of wire 
and uh, I had to insulate it just to make sure that I'm not touching anything. But the original kit uh, that I received was uh, soldered with, I believe it was the kind of solder that has no lead in it. And that one, when you heat it up, you have to really heat up that iron, <laughs> soldering iron uh, to be able to take the parts um, out. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I hate that, uh, that solder and I'm not using it. So anyway, that's it. Let's uh, jump really quick on the demo and uh, see how it sounds. All right, so uh, let's do a quick test on the, on the little room. Here we have the RF attenuator. Sorry for my fingers, but I'm trying not to put my hand in front of the light. The RF attenuator works great. There's only one, one issue. Um, late in the evening, just make sure you don't put it all the way up because you might get a couple of uh, AM broadcast band interferences. I have the same issue with the Sputnik Bridge and receiver. So always I go all the way up and then I uh, go back just a tiny little bit to until the end broadcast band interferences disappear and uh, they disappear completely so clearly the bandpass filter on the uh, on the input uh, does a good job and the uh, tuning control i was not expecting it to be so smooth uh, considering there is not a multi-turn potentiometer but uh, considering that uh, we are only covering the CW portion of the band, or in case you want to build it for SSB, you will only cover the single sideband portion of the band, uh, then the control is pretty smooth for a simple one-turn potentiometer. Very nice. <laughs> I started to really like this receiver. Uh, sensitivity seems to be okay. I tested this one uh, compared to the uh, to the True SDX, and the sensitivity seems to be a little bit better. Here I have the never-ending interferences from some propaganda radio station I don't know where they're still on and nobody does anything about that yeah it works really great the signal is stable in frequency so yeah really really nice receiver for for uh, how simple it is and it fits in this uh, tiny uh, tin can it's, it's really great um, what else I wanted to say about it um, just make sure if you're trying to usually I'm, I'm using it with headphones or a small speaker but if you're trying to use it into an external speaker or uh, Maybe a sound recorder, like the way I'm doing it now, just so you can hear exactly how we, it would sound in your headphones. Um, you have to use a mono cable. The stereo cables don't seem to work, so I don't know exactly how the connections I made inside, but uh, yeah, just make sure you have a mono cable, not a stereo one, and everything is good. So yeah, overall, really, really great receiver. I was honestly not expecting this. <laughs> I really like it. So yeah, <laughs> all I have to do now is to learn uh, Morse code and uh, use it uh, together with my very simple um, 40 meters band CW transmitters. Anyway, I'm just going to let you listen a little more and uh, all I can say is thanks for watching and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have an amazing rest of the week and 73.